here's our three kinematics equations that we've talked about, and we're going to practice using these to solve some problems, okay? So, again, why we have three kinematics equations is because we have all these variables over here that could either be known or unknown, and you need multiple equations to be able to solve in case you don't know one of these, right? So, again, our variables are final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, time interval, displacement. Okay, so let's practice solving some of these. So, here's the first problem. Lamborghini can accelerate from 0 to 27.8 meters per second in 3.4 seconds. What's the acceleration? So before you start going and just throwing equations, pulling them out of your butt and throwing them onto the paper, you need to figure out what equation you're going to use, right? So when you start solving these, pick out what numbers match up with variables, right? So what is the 0? What's the 27.8? All that, right? So 0, 27.8... Those are my velocities, right? So 0 is going to be my initial velocity. 27.8 is going to be my final velocity, right? Write this out in a time of 3.4 seconds. That's the time interval. What's the acceleration of the car? So the acceleration is what we don't know, okay? So if you were just to look at this and say, oh, I'm going to use this equation, right? You can tell this equation doesn't have, I'm sorry, these, this problem doesn't have delta x, the displacement. Right? So you can't use this equation. So you need to figure out what you're going to use first. Right, So I look at this and I know I'm going to use the first equation because final, initial, time, acceleration, this has everything I need. So let's go solve. Right, So Vf equals V0 plus A delta T. Right, So there's my equation. Okay, next thing you're going to do, you're used to just throw numbers in and try to solve. Right, Don't do that. Do the algebra first. You're not that good yet. Do the algebra first, then plug in your numbers and solve. Okay, so I want to solve for the acceleration, right? So I'm going to subtract the initial velocity, right? That's going to get rid of that. And that's going to equal A times delta T. And then I'm going to divide by delta T, right? Cancel that out. And now I have acceleration equals final minus initial velocity over my time interval. Now I can plug my numbers in and solve, right? So now final velocity is 27.8, initial velocity is 0, time interval is 3.4, and if you do that, it's just 27.8 over 3.4, you get 8.18. 8 so the acceleration is 8.18 meters per second squared. Okay, so the last thing when you're solving problems, does this make sense? Does this answer make sense? Okay, so let's think about it. 8.8 .8 meters per second meters per second squared. For a Lamborghini, that makes sense, right? 1G is about 9.8 meters per second squared, so a freaking super expensive sports car. That's a reasonable number, right? I didn't get something in the hundreds. Okay, here's my next problem. Airplane starts from rest, accelerates down a runway at 3.2 meters per second squared for 32 seconds. So, same thing. Before I go do anything, before I start trying to pull equations out of my butt, let me go figure out what I have. Starts from rest. So this is one of those cases where starts from rest, that tells you the initial velocity, right? Even though it's not a number. Accelerates down the runway, so that's going to be my acceleration. Uh, 32.8 seconds is time, so that's going to be my time interval. Determine the distance traveled, so that's delta x. I need to figure out delta x. Okay, so what do I know? I don't know, notice, I don't know final velocity either. It doesn't tell me, right? So I need an equation that doesn't have final velocity. Well, easy. It's going to be this one, right? And if you look at these, you have all the variables here. I have displacement, that's what I need. Initial velocity, I know zero, time, acceleration, time, right? So we're good. We're going to use this one. Okay, so here's my equation. And this one, again, it's the basically the quadratic equation, it looks like a big mess, but see how initial velocity is zero? Anytime your initial velocity is zero, this whole thing is going to be zero, right? Because when my initial velocity is zero, it doesn't matter what I multiplied by, it's just going to be zero. So this whole thing goes away and it basically just says delta x equals one half a delta t squared, right? And this one's even easier because if I want distance, I don't got to do any algebra, I can just plug in and solve. So one half times the acceleration, 3.2 times the time squared, which is 32.8 squared. And if I do that, I get 1721, 1721 meters.
Okay, so again, before you write it down and say, oh, that's my answer, does this make sense? Airplane going down the runway, accelerating for 30 seconds, about a mile, right? A little over a mile, 1,600 meters, 1,700 meters. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, last question. Engineer designing a runway for an airport of the planes that are going to use the airport, the lowest acceleration rate, right? That's acceleration is going to be three meters per second squared. Takeoff speed for the plane. Takeoff speed will be final velocity, right? And so uh, it doesn't say, but I'm going to assume that it starts from rest, right? Because it's taking off from a runway. So I'm going to say initial velocity zero. Minimum acceleration. What's the minimum length for the runway? So I'm solving for displacement again. Except this time, I don't know what delta t is, right? So I need something that doesn't have delta t. Uh, let's look at my equations. Time interval, time interval. Hey, this third one, no time interval. So I can use my third equation, All right? So let's do this. I want delta x, right? So before I plug numbers in, let me do the algebra. So I'm going to subtract v naught squared to a delta x, right? So minus v naught squared gets rid of that. And then I'm going to divide by 2a. That's going to get rid of that, and that'll give me delta x. So it's vf squared minus v naught squared over 2a. So let's plug in our numbers and solve. And so I get 704 meters. So again, does this make sense? So 700 meters for a runway taking off, yes, that's a reasonable number. If I would have gotten like a negative number, or if I would have gotten some humongous number bigger than the mile that I had last time, then yes, then it'd be wrong. But this is a number that makes sense to me. So again, when you're solving problems with kinematics, we're going to do this solving problems all year, right? But when you start solving these problems, the first thing you need to do is figure out what you have. Don't go pulling equations out until you know what you have. Then once you know what you have, write the equation out, do the algebra, and then plug in to solve.